Acts of John. Last episode. Cassian, Galatian 24. 21, has it thus. It is told that the most blessed evangelist John, when he was gently stroking a partridge with his hands, suddenly saw one in the habit of a hunter coming to him. He wondered that a man of such repute and fame should demean himself to such small and humble amusements, and said, Art thou that John whose eminent and widespread fame hath enticed me also with great desire to know thee? Why then art thou taken up with such mean amusements? The blessed John said to him, What is that which thou carriest in thy hands? A bow, said he. And why, said he, dost thou not bear it about always stretched? He answered him, I must not, lest by constant bending the strength of its vigor be wrung and grow soft and perish, and when there is need that the arrows be shot with much strength at some beast, the strength being lost by excess of continual tension, a forcible blow cannot be dealt. Just so, said the blessed John, let not this little and brief relaxation of my mind offend thee, young man, for unless it doth sometimes ease and relax by some remission the force of its tension, it will grow slack through unbroken rigor and will not be able to obey the power of the Spirit. The only common point of the two stories is that street. John amuses himself with a partridge, and a spectator thinks it unworthy of him. The two morals differ wholly. The amount of text lost here is of quite uncertain length. It must have told of the doings at Smyrna, and also, it appears, at Laodica, see the title of the next section. One of the episodes must have been the conversion of a woman of evil life. See below, the harlot that was chaste. The remaining episode which is extant in the Greek is the conclusion of the book, The Death or Assumption of John. Before it must be placed the stories which we have only in the Latin, of, Abdias, and another text by, Melitus, i.e. Melito, and the two or three isolated fragments. Lat. 14. Now on the next, or another, De Craton, a philosopher, had proclaimed in the marketplace that he would give an example of the contempt of riches, and the spectacle was after this manner. He had persuaded two young men, the richest of the city, who were brothers, to spend their whole inheritance and buy each of them a jewel, and these they break in pieces publicly in the sight of the people. And while they were doing this, it happened by chance that the apostle passed by. And calling Craton the philosopher to him, he said, That is a foolish despising of the world which is praised by the mouths of men, but long ago condemned by the judgment of God. For as that is a vain medicine whereby the disease is not extirpated, so is it a vain teaching by which the faults of souls and of conduct are not cured. But indeed my master taught a youth who desired to attain to eternal life, in these words, saying that if he would be perfect, he should sell all his goods and give to the poor, and so doing he would gain treasure in heaven and find the life that has no ending. And Craton said to him, Here the fruit of covetousness is set forth in the midst of men, and hath been broken to pieces. But if God is indeed thy master and willeth this to be, that the sum of the price of these jewels should be given to the poor, cause thou the gems to be restored whole, that what I have done for the praise of men, thou mayest do for the glory of him whom thou callest thy master. Then the blessed John gathered together the fragments of the gems, and holding them in his hands, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Lord Jesu Christ, unto whom nothing is impossible, who when the world was broken by the tree of concupiscence, didst restore it again in thy faithfulness by the tree of the cross, who didst give to one born blind the eyes which nature had denied him, who didst recall Lazarus, dead and buried, after the fourth day unto the light, and has subjected all diseases and all sicknesses unto the word of thy power. So also now do with these precious stones which these, not knowing the fruits of almsgiving, have broken in pieces for the praise of men. Recover thou them, Lord, now by the hands of thine angels, that by their value the work of mercy may be fulfilled and make these men believe in thee the unbegotten Father through thine only begotten Son Jesus Christ our Lord, with the Holy Ghost the Illuminator and Sanctifier of the whole Church. World without end. And when the faithful who were with the Apostle had answered and said Amen, 
the fragments of the gems were forthwith so joined in one that no mark at all that they had been broken remained in them. And Craton the philosopher, with his disciples, seeing this, fell at the feet of the apostle and believed thenceforth, or immediately, and was baptized, with them all, and began himself publicly to preach the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. 15. Those two brothers, therefore, of whom we spake, sold the gems which they had bought by the sale of their inheritance and gave the price to the poor. And thereafter a very great multitude of believers began to be joined to the apostle. And when all this was done, it happened that after the same example, two honorable men of the city of the Ephesians sold all their goods and distributed them to the needy, and followed the apostle as he went through the cities preaching the word of God. But it came to pass, when they entered the city of Pergamum, that they saw their servants walking abroad arrayed in silken raiment and shining with the glory of this world. Whence it happened that they were pierced with the arrow of the devil and became sad, seeing themselves poor and clad with a single cloak while their own servants were powerful and prosperous. But the apostle of Christ, perceiving these wiles of the devil, said, I see that ye have changed your minds and your countenances on this account, that, obeying the teaching of my Lord Jesus Christ, ye have given all ye had to the poor. Now, if ye desire to recover that which ye formerly possessed of gold, silver, and precious stones, bring me some straight rods, each of you a bundle. And when they had done so, he called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the V were turned into gold. And the apostle said to them, Bring me small stones from the seashore. And when they had done this also, he called upon the majesty of the Lord, and all the pebbles were turned into gems. Then the blessed John turned to those men and said to them, Go about to the goldsmiths and jewelers for seven days, and when ye have proved that these are true gold and true jewels, tell me. And they went, both of them, and after seven days returned to the apostle, saying, Lord, we have gone about the shops of all the goldsmiths, and they have all said that they never saw such pure gold. Likewise the jewelers have said the same, that they never saw such excellent and precious gems. 16. Then the holy John said unto them, Go, and redeem to you the lands which ye have sold, for ye have lost the estates of heaven. Buy yourselves silken raiment, that for a time ye may shine like the rose which showeth its fragrance and redness and suddenly fadeth away. For ye sighed at beholding your servants and groaned that ye were become poor. Flourish, therefore, that ye may fade. Be rich for the time, that ye may be beggars for ever. Is not the Lord's hand able to make riches overflowing and unsurpassably glorious? But he hath appointed a conflict for souls, that they may believe that they shall have eternal riches, who for his name's sake have refused temporal wealth. Indeed, our master told us concerning a certain rich man who feasted every day and shone with gold and purple at whose door lay a beggar, Lazarus, who desired to receive even the crumbs that fell from his table, and no man gave unto him. And it came to pass that on one day they died, both of them, and that beggar was taken into the rest which is in Abraham's bosom, but the rich man was cast into flaming fire, out of which he lifted up his eyes and saw Lazarus, and prayed him to dip his finger in water and cool his mouth for he was tormented in the flames. And Abraham answered him and said, Remember, son, that thou receivedest good things in thy life, but this Lazarus likewise evil things. Wherefore rightly is he now comforted while thou art tormented, and besides all this, a great gulf is fixed between you and us, so that neither can they come thence hither, nor hither thence. But he answered, I have five brethren. I pray that someone may go to warn them, that they come not into this flame. And Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. To that he answered, Lord, unless one rise up again, they will not believe. Abraham said to him, If they believe not Moses and the prophets, neither will they believe, if one rise again. And these words our Lord and Master confirmed by examples of mighty works. For when they said to him, Who hath come hither from thence, that we may believe him? He answered, Bring hither the dead whom ye have. And when they had brought unto him a young man which was dead, Pease, Miletus, 
three dead corpses. He was waked up by him as one that sleepeth, and confirmed all his words. But wherefore should I speak of my Lord, when at this present there are those whom in his name and in your presence and sight I have raised from the dead, in whose name ye have seen palsied men healed, lepers cleansed, blind men enlightened, and many delivered from evil spirits? But the riches of these mighty works they cannot have who have desired to have earthly wealth. Finally, when ye yourselves went unto the sick and called upon the name of Jesus Christ, they were healed. Ye did drive out devils and restore light to the blind. Behold, this grace is taken from you, and ye are become wretched, who are mighty and great. And whereas there was such fear of you upon the devils that at your bidding they left the men whom they possessed, now ye will be in fear of the devils. For he that loveth money is the servant of mammon, and mammon is the name of a devil who is set over carnal gains, and is the master of them that love the world. But even the lovers of the world do not possess riches, but are possessed of them. For it is out of reason that for one belly there should be laid up so much food as would suffice a thousand, and for one body so many garments as would furnish clothing for a thousand men. In vain, therefore, is that stored up which cometh not into use, and for whom it is kept, no man knoweth, as the Holy Ghost saith by the prophet. In vain is every man troubled who heapeth up riches and knoweth not for whom he gathereth them. Naked did our birth from women bring us into this light, destitute of food and drink. Naked will the earth receive us which brought us forth. We possess in common the riches of the heaven. The brightness of the sun is equal for the rich and the poor, and likewise the light of the moon and the stars, the softness of the air and the drops of rain, and the gate of the church and the fount of sanctification and the forgiveness of sins, and the sharing in the altar, and the eating of the body and drinking of the blood of Christ, and the anointing of the chrism, and the grace of the giver, and the visitation of the Lord, and the pardon of sin. In all these the dispensing of the Creator is equal, without respect of persons. Neither doth the rich man use these gifts after one manner and the poor after another. But wretched and unhappy is the man who would have something more than sufficed him. For of this come heats of fevers rigors of cold, divers pains in all the members of the body, and he can neither be fed with food nor sated with drink, that covetousness may learn that money will not profit it, which being laid up bringeth to the keepers thereof anxiety by day and night, and suffereth them not even for an hour to be quiet and secure. For while they guard their houses against thieves, till their estate, ply the plow, pay taxes, build storehouses, strive for gain, try to baffle the attacks of the strong, and to strip the weak, exercise their wrath on whom they can, and hardly bear it from others, shrink not from playing at tables and from public shows, fear not to defile or to be defiled, suddenly do they depart out of this world, naked, bearing only their own sins with them, for which they shall suffer eternal punishment. 17. While the apostle was thus speaking, behold there was brought to him by his mother, who was a widow, a young man who thirty days before had first married a vivife. And the people which were waiting upon the burial came with the widowed mother and cast themselves at the apostle's feet altogether with groans, weeping, and mourning, and besought him that in the name of his God, as he had done with Drusiana, so he would raise up this young man also. And there was so great weeping of them all that the apostle himself could hardly refrain from crying in tears. He cast himself down, therefore, in prayer, and wept a long time, and rising from prayer spread out his hands to heaven, and for a long space prayed within himself. And when he had so done thrice, he commanded the body which was swathed to be loosed, and said, Thou youth Stactius, who for love of thy flesh hast quickly lost thy soul. Thou youth which knewest not thy Creator nor perceivedest the Saviour of men, and wast ignorant of thy true friend, and therefore didst fall into the snare of the worst enemy. Behold, I have poured out tears and prayers unto my Lord for thine ignorance, that thou mayest rise from the dead, the bands of death being loosed, and declare unto these two, to Atticus and Eugenius, how great glory they have lost, and how great punishment they have incurred. Then Stactius arose and worshipped the apostle, and began to reproach his disciples, saying, I beheld your angels. Be beeping.
and the angels of Satan rejoicing at your overthrow. For now in a little time ye have lost the kingdom that was prepared for you, and the dwelling places builded of shining stones, full of joy, of feasting and delights, full of everlasting life and eternal light, and have gotten yourselves places of darkness, full of dragons, of roaring flames, of torments, and punishments unsurpassable, of pains and anguish, fear and horrible trembling. Ye have lost the places full of unfading flowers, shining, full of the sounds of instruments of music, organs, and have gotten on the other hand places wherein roaring and howling and mourning ceaseth not day nor night. Nothing else remaineth for you save to ask the Apostle of the Lord that like as he hath raised me to life, he would raise you also from death unto salvation and bring back your souls which now are blotted out of the book of life. 18. Then both he that had been raised and all the people together with Atticus and Eugenius, cast themselves at the apostles' feet and besought him to intercede for them with the Lord. Unto whom the holy apostle gave this answer, that for thirty days they should offer penitence to God, and in that space pray especially that the rods of gold might return to their nature and likewise the stones return to the meanness wherein they were made. And it came to pass that after thirty days were accomplished, and neither the rods were turned cd into wood nor the gems into pebbles, Atticus and Eugenius came and said to the apostle, Thou hast always taught mercy, and preached forgiveness, and bidden that one man should spare another. And if God willeth that a man should forgive a man, how much more shall he, as he is God, both forgive and spare men? We are confounded for our sin. And whereas we have cried with our eyes which lusted after the world, we do now repent with eyes that weep. We pray thee, Lord, we pray thee, Apostle of God, show indeed that mercy which in word thou hast always promised. Then the holy John said unto them as they wept and repented, and all interceded for them likewise. Our Lord God used these words when he spake concerning sinners. I will not the death of a sinner, but I will rather that he be converted and live. For when the Lord Jesus Christ taught us concerning the penitent, he said, Verily I say unto you, there is great joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth and turneth himself from his sins. And there is more joy over him than over ninety in. Nine which have not sinned. Wherefore I would have you know that the Lord accepteth the repentance of these men. And he turned unto Atticus and Eugenius and said, Go, carry back the rods unto the wood whence ye took them. For now are they returned to their own nature, and the stones unto the seashore for they are become common stones as they were before. And when this was accomplished, they received again the grace which they had lost, so that again they cast out devils as before time and healed the sick and enlightened the blind, and daily the Lord did many mighty works by their means. 19 Till shortly the destruction oi the temple of Ephesus and the conversion of 12,000 people. Then follows the episode of the poison cup in a form which probably represents the story in the Lucian Acts. We have seen that the late Greek texts place it at the beginning, in the presence of Domitian. XX. Now when Aristodemus, who was chief priest of all those idols, saw this, filled with a wicked spirit, he stirred up sedition among the people, so that one people prepared themselves to fight against the other. And John turned to him and said, Tell me, Aristodemus, what can I do to take away the anger from thy soul? And Aristodemus said, If thou wilt have me believe in thy God, I will give thee poison to drink, and if thou drink it, and die not, it will appear that thy God is true. The apostle answered, If thou give me poison to drink, when I call on the name of my Lord, it will not be able to harm me. Aristodemus said again, I will that thou first see others drink it and die straightway that so thy heart may recoil from that cup. And the blessed John said, I have told thee already that I am prepared to drink it that thou mayest believe on the Lord Jesus Christ when thou seest me whole after the cup of poison. Aristodemus therefore went to the proconsul and asked of him two men who were to undergo the sentence of death. And when he had set them in the midst of the marketplace before all the people, in the sight of the apostle he made them drink the poison. And as soon as they had drunk it, they gave up the ghost. Then Aristodemus turned to John and said, 
Hearken to me and depart from thy teaching wherewith thou callest away the people from the worship of the gods. Or take and drink this, that thou mayest show that thy God is almighty. If after thou hast drunk, thou canst remain whole. Then the blessed Jome, as they lay dead which had drunk the poison, like a fearless. And brave man took the cup, and making the sign of the cross, spake thus, My God, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose word the heavens were established, unto whom all things are subject, whom all creation serveth, whom all power obeyeth, feareth, and trembleth, when we call on thee for succor, whose name the serpent hearing is still, the dragon flee, the viper is quiet, the toad, which is called a frog, is still and strengthless, the scorpion is quenched, the basilisk vanquished, and the phalangia, spider, doth no hurt in a word, all venomous things, and the fiercest reptiles and noisome beasts, are pierced, or covered with darkness. Peas, Miletus adds, and all roots hurtful to the health of men dry up. Do thou, I say, quench the venom of this poison, put out the deadly workings thereof, and void it of the strength which it hath in it, and grant in thy sight unto all these whom thou hast created, eyes that they may see, and ears that they may hear and a heart that they may understand thy greatness. And when he had thus said, he armed his mouth and all his body with the sign of the cross and drank all that was in the cup. And after be had drunk, he said, I ask that they for whose sake I have drunk, be turned unto thee, O Lord, and by thine enlightening receive the salvation which is in thee. And when for the space of three hours the people saw that John was of a cheerful countenance, and that there was no sign at all of paleness or fear in him, they began to cry out with a loud voice, He is the one true God whom John worshippeth. 21. But Aristodemus even so believed not, though the people reproached him, but turned unto John and said, This one thing I lack if thou in the name of thy God raise up these that have died by this poison, my mind will be cleansed of all doubt. When he said that, the people rose against Aristodemus saying, We will burn thee and thine house if thou goest on to trouble the apostle further with thy words. John, therefore, seeing that there was a fierce sedition, asked for silence, and said in the hearing of all, The first of the virtues of God which we ought to imitate is patience, by which we are able to bear with the foolishness of unbelievers. Wherefore if Aristodemus is still held by unbelief, let us loose the knots of his unbelief. He shall be compelled, even though late, to acknowledge his Creator for I will not cease from this work until a remedy shall bring help to his wounds, and like physicians which have in their hands a sick man needing medicine, so also, if Aristodemus be not yet cured by that which hath now been done, he shall be cured by that which I will now do. And he called Aristodemus to him, and gave him his coat, and he himself stood clad only in his mantle. And Aristodemus said to him, Wherefore hast thou given me thy coat? John said to him, That thou mayest even so be put to shame and depart from thine unbelief. And Aristodemus said, And how shall thy coat make me to depart from unbelief? The apostle answered, Go and cast it upon the bodies of the dead, and thou shalt say thus, The apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ hath sent me that in his name ye may rise again that all may know that life and death are servants of my Lord Jesus Christ. Which when Aristodemus had done, and had seen them rise, he worshipped John, and ran quickly to the proconsul and began to say with a loud voice, Hear me, hear me, thou proconsul! I think thou rememberest that I have often stirred up thy wrath against John and devised many things against him daily. Wherefore I fear lest I feel his wrath. For he is a God hidden in the form of a man and hath drunk poison, and not only continueth whole, but them also which had died by the poison he hath recalled to life by my means, by the touch of his coat, and they have no mark of death upon them. Which when the proconsul heard he said, And what wilt thou have me to do? Aristodemus answered, Let us go and fall at his feet and ask pardon, and whatever he commandeth us let us do. Then they came together and cast themselves down and besought forgiveness, and he received them and offered prayer and thanksgiving to God, and he ordained them a fast of a week, 
and when it was fulfilled he baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and his Almighty Father and the Holy Ghost the Illuminator. And when the V were baptized, with all their house and their servants and their kindred, they break all their idols and build a church in the name of St. John, wherein he himself was taken up, in manner following. This bracketed sentence, of late complexion, serves to introduce the last episode of the book. James gives two additional fragments that do not fit in any other place. These fragments are very broken and are not of much use for this present project. However, if there is interest in them, they can be found on pages 264 to 6 of the text. The last episode of these acts, as is the case with several others of the apocryphal acts, was preserved CD separately for reading in church on the saint's day.